guys, this is Beer here. How's everybody doing? So I didn't dress like a superhero today. My dog had a little bit of a tummy problem, so I had to take him to the vet. The vet was closed, so I had to take him to the emergency vet. But a lot of you guys know Shorty because you've seen pictures of him. He's okay. Um, they gave him some medicine, and he's resting now. It's about um, quarter to nine. So I'm going to finish up uh, the end of our chapter book that I was reading to you. Magic Tree House number 14, Day of the Dragon King by Mary Pope Osborne. She is one of the authors that lets us read out our stuff during this um, time of at-home learning. So here we go, chapter four. The Great Wall. Jack and Annie ran around the farmhouse. At the back was an ox cart filled with bags of grain. There was no one in sight. The shouting behind them got louder. Jack and Annie looked at each other and then dived into the back of the wooden cart. They buried themselves in the middle of the bags of grain. Jack's heart pounded as the shouts came closer. He held his breath and waited for the people to leave. Suddenly, the cart lurched forward. Someone was driving them away. Jack and Annie peeked over the bags. Jack saw the back of a driver. He was calmly steering the ox cart over the dirt road. They were on their way to the walled city. Jack and Annie ducked down again. This is great whispered Annie. All we have to do is jump out when we get into the city. Yep, said Jack softly. Then we'll find the Imperial Library, find the book, and get back to the Magic Tree House. No problem, whispered Annie. Whoa! The cart slowly came to a halt. Jack held his breath. He heard voices and heavy tramping of feet. Lots of feet. He and Annie peeked out. Oh man, he whispered. A long line of men were crossing the road in front of the cart. They carried axes, shovels, and hoes. Guards marched alongside them. Let's find out what's happening, said Jack. He reached into a sack and pulled out the china book. Pushing his glasses into place, he found a picture of the workers. He read, The Dragon King forced many of his subjects to start building a wall to protect China from invaders. Later, emperors made the wall even longer. Finally, it stretched 3,700 miles along China's border. The Great Wall of China is the longest structure ever built. Um, I'm trying to think. Fourth and fifth graders, you probably remember a couple years ago when we learned about the Great Wall of China. Wow, the Great Wall of China, said Jack. I've heard of that, said Annie. Who hasn't, said Jack. Those guys are going to work on it right now. Just then, somebody grabbed Jack and Annie. They looked up. It was the driver of the cart. Who are you? He asked angrily. Uh, we, uh, Jack didn't know what to say. The man's gaze fell, oh, fell on the open book in Jack's hand. His mouth dropped open. He let go of Jack and Annie. Slowly, he reached out and touched the book. He looked back at Jack and Annie with wide eyes. What is this? He said. Chapter five. It's a book from our country, said Jack. Your books are made of bamboo, but ours are made of paper. Actually, your country invented paper, but later, in the future. The man looked confused. Never mind, said Annie. It's for reading. It's for learning about faraway places. The man stared at him. Tears filled his eyes. What's wrong? said Annie softly. I love reading and learning, he said. So do I, said Jack. The man smiled. You don't understand. I am dressed as a farmer, he said. But in truth, I am a scholar. What's a scholar? said Annie. We are great readers, learners, and writers, he said. We have long been the most honored citizens in China. The scholar's smile faded. But now scholars are in danger, he said, and many of us have gone into hiding. Why? said Jack. The Dragon King is afraid of the power of our books and learning, said the scholar. He wants people to think only what he wants them to think. Any day he may order the burning of the books. Annie gasped. <gasps> Does that mean what I think it means, said Jack? The scholar nodded. All the books in the Imperial Library will be burned, he said. That's rotten, said Annie. Indeed it is, the scholar said quietly. Listen, we have a mission to get a book from that library, said Jack. Who are you? asked the scholar. Show him, said Annie. He reached into her shirt pocket as Jack reached into his sack. They brought out the secret library cards. The letters shimmered in the sunlight. The scholar's mouth dropped open once again. You are master librarians, he said. I have never met one so honored who are so young. He bowed to show his respect. Thank you, said Jack and Annie. I'll show you that picture. They bowed back to him. How can I help you, said the scholar. We need to go to the Imperial Library and find this book, said Jack. He held out Morgan's bamboo strip to the scholar. 
we will go to the imperial library said the scholar as for the story i know it well it was a true one written lo not long ago but i warn you we will be in great danger we know said annie the scholar smiled i am happy to be doing something i believe in again said the scholar let us go they all climbed into the front of the cart the long line of wall builders were marching in the distance as the oxen started forward the scholar turned back to jack and annie where are you from he asked frog creek pennsylvania said annie i have never heard of it said the scholar do they have a library there oh sure there's a library in every town in fact there are probably thousands of libraries in our country and millions of books and no one burns them right said jack everyone gets to go to the school and learn to read the scholar stared at him and shook his head it sounds like story dice he said it does to me too the ox cart bumped across the wooden bridge that crossed over a moat then it sorry chapter six the dragon king the ox cart bumped across the wooden bridge and crossed over a moat then it passed guards standing by giant wooden gates are the gates ever closed jack said oh yes every day at sunset said the scholar when with the gong sounds the gates close the bridge comes up and the city is sealed shut for the night i guess visitors have to leave before that happens annie said or they'll be stuck here for the whole night right yes said the scholar the cart bumped between the city gates rows of small houses were bunched together on either side of the street they were made of mud with grass roofs people cooked over outdoor fires they washed their clothes in wooden tubs as the ox cart bumped along the houses got larger there were they were made these were made of painted wood and pottery tiles they all had curved roofs why are the roofs like that said jack to keep away the bad spirits said the scholar how do they do that said annie the spirits can at only travel in straight lines said the scholar whispered annie the cart went by some open tea shops then it passed a large market square filled with stalls and shoppers people were buying and selling fish chicken firewood wagon wheels silk cloth furs and jade jewelry some people were lined up at a stall filled with tiny cages what's for sale there said annie cricket said the scholar they make good pets you can feed them tea leaves and enjoy their delicate song the cart moved on towards the dragon king's walled palace they stopped in front of the palace gates grain delivery the scholar shouted up to the guard in the tower the guard waved them through inside were beautiful gardens and huge mounds of earth surrounded by a low brick wall that is the imperial burial grounds the scholar said pointing at the mounds who's buried there said jack the ancestors of the dragon king said the scholar what are ancestors annie asked they are the people in your family who lived before you said the scholar some day the dragon king himself will be buried there three hundred thousand workers have been building his burial tomb oh man said jack he looked over his shoulder at the burial grounds he wondered why it took so many workers to build a tomb no said the scholar jack whirled around what's wrong he asked the scholar pointed at the palace courtyard a dark cloud of smoke was rising into the sky fire said the scholar the books said jack hurry said annie the scholar snapped the reins the oxen tro tro uh, bleh, trotted up the stone path when the cart ro rolled into the courtyard soldiers were everywhere they threw wood on a huge bonfire others were carrying bamboo strips down the steep stairs that led from the palace are these books asked jack yes the strips are tied together into different bundles moaned the scholar each bundle is a book Look, said Annie, pointing to the palace entrance. Stepping outside was a man in a rich flowing robe and a tall hat. Jack knew him at once. The Dragon King. Chapter 7. The Dragon King watched a bonfire as it blazed up towards the sky. Around the fire, the air was thick and wavy. Bamboo books were stacked beside the fire, waiting to be burned. Hurry, said the scholar. They jumped down from the cart and joined the crowd by the bonfire. The wag Dragon King shouted to the soldiers. They began throwing the books into the fire. The bamboo crackled as it burned. Stop, cried Annie. Jack grabbed her. Quiet, he said. Annie pulled away. Stop, she shouted again, but her voice was lost in the noise of the roaring fire. There's your story, said the scholar. He pointed to a bamboo book that had fallen off a waiting stack. I'll get it, said Annie. She dashed over to the book. Annie, cried Jack. But she had already snatched up the bundle of bamboo strips and was charging back to them got it quick put it in your sack she said jack put the bundle of bamboo strips in his sack and then he looked around fearfully he gasped <gasps> the dragon king was glaring at them then he headed their way seize them he shouted run through the burial grounds the scholar said to jack and annie the soldiers will be afraid to follow they fear the spirits of the ancestors thanks said jack thanks for everything 
Good luck, cried Annie. Then she and Jack took off. Soldiers shouted after them. An arrow whizzed by them. Woo! But Jack and Annie kept running. They ran down the path to the barrow grounds. They jumped over the low brick wall and ran between the huge mounds of earth. Suddenly, arrows filled the air around them. The archers were shooting for the t from the tower. Look, said Jack. There was a doorway in one of the mounds. Jack and Annie ducked inside. They were in a long hall lit with oil lamps. It's so quiet, said Annie. She walked down the passageway. There, hey, there's some steps here. Don't go any further, said Jack. Why not? We don't know what's down there, said Jack. This is a burial tomb, remember? It's creepy. Let's just take a quick look, said Annie. Maybe it's a way out of here. Jack took a deep breath. You might be right, he said. Okay, but go slow. He didn't want to stumble upon a dead body. Ooh. Annie started down the steep steps. Jack followed. The lamps lit their way as they kept going down and down. Finally, they reached the bottom. Jack blinked. Even, through, even though oil lamps glowed everywhere, it was hard to see at first. When Jack's eyes got used to the strange light, his heart nearly stopped. Oh, man, he breathed. They were in a room filled with soldiers. Thousands of them. Chapter 8, The Tomb Jack and Annie stood frozen. The silent soldiers did, too. Finally, Annie spoke. They're fake, she said. Fake, whispered Jack. They're not real, she said. They look real, said Jack. Annie walked straight toward the front row of soldiers. Jack held his breath. Annie pulled the soldier's nose. Fake, she said. Ooh, oh, brother, said Jack. He walked over to the soldiers and touched their painted face. It was hard as stone. It's amazing, Jack said. Annie nodded. It's like a museum. She walked down a row between two lines of soldiers. Wait, this is spooky, said Jack. What is this place? She put down her sack and pulled out the china book. He found a picture of a frozen army and read out loud. The dragon kid, king had 7,000 life-size clay figures made for his burial tomb. The clay was baked and painted. The dragon king hoped that the clay army would protect him after he died. It's like the pyramid in ancient Egypt, said Jack. Remember, the queen was buried with a boat and lots of things to take to the afterlife. He looked around. Annie, I'm here, she called. She was far down another row. Come back here, yelled Jack. No, you come here, said Annie. It's so cool. All the faces are different. Jack threw the back, back book back in his sack, and then he hurried down the road to Annie. Look, she said, just look. And in 1974, I think it was, a man discovered these, and they're called the Terracotta Soldiers. And you can see most of these Terracotta Soldiers um, still in China. And the guy who um, discovered them, he was just a regular person, discovered them. Um, you know, they had been buried, obviously, for um, thousands, I don't know about thousands, hundreds and hundreds of years, obviously. Um, he um, is still there when you take the tour, the guy who found them. And uh, that is one thing I've always wanted to see is the terracotta soldiers. And that's what they're called. You can um, find pictures of them um, online. When we get back to school, maybe next year. Um, well, whenever we get back to school. Um, but if not next year, we'll do a, a thing about China, uh, a unit on China. And we'll look at terracotta soldiers. In the flickering lamplight, they, wa they wandered down the rows of soldiers. No two soldiers had the same nose, the same eyes, or the same mouth. Oh, man, no wonder why so many people had to work on this tomb, said Jack. They really did a good job, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. There, was ne there were kneeling archers and foot soldiers dressed in red and black armor. There were real bronze swords, daggers, ace axes, spears, bows, and arrows. There were even life-size wooden chariots with horses. The horses looked completely real. There were different colors with white teeth and red tongues. I have to take some notes about all this. We're going to have to stop, boys and girls, because we're at 14 minutes, 20 seconds. I left off on page 51, so we do have a little few more chapters, um, and I will finish that for tomorrow's reading of 14, Day of the Dragon. Hope everybody's doing good. Still missing you. Still wish we were back at school, but we're making the best of it. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. I finish it tomorrow.